In essence, the report says that Lancashire Constabulary lost control of the media narrative and in doing so allowed people to question their competence at handling this fast-moving, this complex investigation. An investigation which the report makes clear was in and of itself handled in a highly professional manner, but it was the media management component that was poor. In fact, reading all 143 pages of this report, it's hard to see it in any other way than as a damning and comprehensive takedown of Lancashire Constabulary's media management. Media interest around the Nicola Bully case was frankly off the scale. The report says that in one month, Lancashire Constabulary's media and engagement department logged 500 media inquiries and 75,000 75, inbound pieces of social media. In one day, at the height of the inquiry, there were 6,500 news stories globally mentioning Nicola Bully's case. And one TikTok video, one TikTok video with the Nicola Bully hashtag racked up 270 million, 270 million views alone. Managing media interest on that scale is nigh on impossible. One can try to manage the traditional media, managing the diffuse spread across the globe social media, nigh on impossible. The media feeding frenzy was in part triggered or fueled by the police referring to Nicola Bully rather mysteriously as a vulnerable person. The report says that they should have recognised that saying such would have led to a series of easy to anticipate questions which might have been better dealt with by way of off the record non-reportable briefings to the media. These briefings simply didn't happen. I have to say that whilst they may for a time have satisfied the traditional print and broadcast media, I don't think they'd have made much difference to the social media component of the whole case. The report says that it was wrong for the senior investigating officer to front up at the initial press conferences. She had more than enough on her plate with the actual investigation without having those additional media handling responsibilities. The report says the reason she did face up to the media initially at least was because the person who was due to um, handle the press conference was off sick at short notice. But the police should have identified a suitably senior public face of the investigation and she or he could then have handled the media, that was their main responsibility, while the SIO got on with the investigative part. Having both responsibilities was an intolerable pressure and a pressure that manifested itself at the very least in tetchiness by the SIO at uh, certainly one and I, I think probably several if I recall correctly of the press conferences. The report makes it absolutely crystal clear that training, and in particular media training, would have helped. For example, family liaison officers, who are media trained, media aware, would be in a much, much better position to advise families on the likely interest a case will generate, and can then advise families accordingly. Media training, media awareness, media management training, for those who are in the back office of the media and engagement department and in particular media training for those fronting up to the camera, fronting up to an audience via television, radio, online and print outlets so that they know how to handle in particular those really, really tough and probing questions, staying in control of the process of being interviewed.